This is a static preview of a very flat and spectacular car and one of my favorite ones is the Mercedes SL in its recent facelift here on Autogefühl that is your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with me, with Thomas. Well, it's not an all-new car, but I mean, it is already a very refined one. And in the recent facelift of the Mercedes SL Roadster, what can we see? The headlights have been redesigned. This one's here are the LED ones and the front grille. First of all, the headlights, they are drawn far to the side here, more horizontal, more look like a drop. And the whole front, it looks even longer I think and the front grille now has this diamond structure which is very interesting definitely and the form you can see it right here the lower part is now wider and the upper part is a little bit shorter if you see it like like this and beforehand it was the other way around and you can check out our Mercedes SL driving review there you can also see the pre facelift model that's for the exterior change in the front. We can also move on to the side profile. And what I can always see is those huge air outtakes on the top. It's very beautiful. Then 19 inch rims, a special AMG rims. And this is here, this, well, it is totally fake. There's nothing really behind, it, but this is still reminiscence on the old very old SL, the first SL models which had the drum brakes in the front and there the air could flow out but here in this case it has no function. It's not like with the BMW where they have introduced a function that the air can like flow out of the wheel arch. This one here is totally closed. Of course this one here is the classic roadster scheme also in the side profile. There hasn't been changed that much. I mean what is there to change? Not that much, definitely. It's the SL500 we see here right now. we we'll soon also get to the engines and I'll tell you more about the different engines that are available. In the rear, also changes are not that much. A little bit more to see inside the taillights. And you see, they are also drawn far more out to give, you know, a little bit, a little bit more. Thank you very much. That's how it happens. So, and we can also open the hatch here for you, it works electronically and um, and again <laughs> and this is very interesting I didn't do anything, have you seen it? first of all, before this had to be done manually to remove that one, now it was automatically done you can see it right here so first of all, yeah, there it is because first of all, um, you could put that one here up electronically, that was possible before to have a better loading but then the second part that was then manually done so very interesting part here and then you can really very well access the trunk here I mean yes it is one of the convertibles that Mercedes is offering that does have the hard top and that of course reduces the space we have in the trunk however then you also have the advantage you know, when you're parking outside or something like that, it's more durable and of course it's more silent on the interior. However, the soft tops have become way better than they were in the past and that's also one reason why Mercedes, for example, went for the soft top with the new C-Class convertible, which you can also see in our review. It's linked in the video description and also very interesting car. Let's move on to the interior. And it's one of my favorite vehicles because first of all the styling is really great. I would always just go with the basis version. Um, that one here is already a little bit pimped as is the SL500. In Germany we for example get out of the SL400 and it's a pretty simple GT Roadster styling and I love the design of the air vents for example forming a star here. And when I sit down here and Probably also, here you can adjust the seat here on the inside. Here I really always feel at home. Um, well, I have driven a lot of kilometers already um, with the Mercedes SL. And that's all, maybe also one reason why I, why I feel at home here. 
I think this car here conveys a very special auto fuel, a very special car feeling because you feel really comfortable, but there's also this nuance of sportiness and the nuance of tradition. It's all mixed in one. Also, when you look from here now, you can see the two, the two fins which are on top of the hood. And that is just one, like one of those very emotional elements. And I also like how the car drives because the stability control, even if you have it a little, just basically in place, allows just a little bit of wheel spin. And that is really much fun to drive, even though if you, you know, don't want to go on a totally uncontrolled ride. And that makes this car very special. In the facelift, there aren't so many changes. Um, basically, the thing we see here in the interior has been um, remained the same. Maybe here with a little software update um, for the infotainment, but that's um, that's kind of it. You still controlled here in, in the middle. That's the system here. Um, so there weren't like the main thing is, is the design on the, on the outside. A little bit more power for some of the engines and a little bit of fine tuning of suspension and stuff. But this car, as I said, didn't really need it too too much work actually. Um, if you come closer here, you can see um, how I can pick for example the, the dynamic select in the infotainment screen it's been changed a little bit and um, for example you can uh, check out the engine data here uh, when you have turned on the ignition that wasn't wasn't there before so um, but basically we don't see too much changes and as I said it doesn't doesn't really doesn't really have to be the electric part here in the trunk that was for example very interesting here Still, as I said, one of my favorite cars, especially in the um, So far, you could get it also in the basic version with cloth seats, actually. And I have to recheck the price if that's supposed to... Oh, engine, of course, I have to open it first. This one here, as I said, the SL500. This is a V8 engine. It depends on the market which engine is available where. And, for example, our friends in the US usually don't get the entry version we also get in Germany. Wow, this long hood, isn't it really essential for a car? By the way, you see, it doesn't go to the very front. That can possibly change some insurance costs because they do not have to place, replace the whole hood when you have a small front crash. This one here, the V8 from the SL500, has 455 horsepower, 4.6 liters of displacement. There's also the V6 available, which we know from a lot of other models from Mercedes, 367 horsepower. And then there are also the AMG models, and they have also either the V8, and that one then is just a little bit below 600 horsepower. And there's also the V12, which is, well, in the, not the S SL63, it was the V8, the SL65 is then the V12. But I mean, come on, 12 cylinders nowadays, hmm, I don't think that's up to date anymore. And you also think about this very beautiful car here. For example, if you take it as a um, SL400, you can already get, already, at about 100,000 euros for the list price. That's actually expensive enough if you go for the V12 for the top version, which then have also more than 600 horsepower, which you can never bring on the ground you pay a quarter of a million euros. And to me, especially with such an open car, this is a GT, it doesn't have to be all the top until the max. I just want to enjoy the pure auto fuel with this car. And there I'm also really fine with a V8, if not with a V6. I hope you liked our small tour here of the Mercedes SL facelift. At some point, we'll surely drive this one again. It's a very enjoyable car. And please also check out our other videos with the Mercedes SL because we have some very beautiful countryside pictures there as well in it. Thank you very much for watching Autogefühl. Thank you very much for walking through the camera. <laughs> Guests starring here with a million of views now. But that's how it goes on the auto shows. That's how it goes also with the live on tape Autogefühl. And hope you'll join me, join Thomas for our next Geneva Motor Show episode or of course even better for our next full reviews. Thank you.